Uh, okay, so before you can start even you know doing your scene, you gotta sort of you gotta plan out you know what exactly you want you, you want to have in that shot. Uh, so you know you can just use you know a regular piece of paper and, and a pencil, or uh, or if you have a Wacom tablet like I do, then you can just draw it right in Photoshop. So uh, here in Photoshop, I'm just gonna go file new and just create a sort of a my my empty canvas. So since I I want the image to be really big and I want to be able to move the camera from left to right. Um, I, I'm going to make the image extra big, so like maybe five and a half thousand pixels across and two thousand pixels uh, high. And click OK. And here you can see this creates an empty canvas. So I'm just going to grab my uh, pen tool up here, um, then choose my color, which is just going to be black. And uh, and then you can you know you can change the size. Uh, you know, up here, if you click, you can change the size of your your brush, um, and just start draw drawing basic lines. You know, your horizon. Uh, you know, if maybe you want some kind of building to be there. I mean, you know, wh whatever it is that you want your scene to look like. So, you know, draw a little building. You know, stuff like that. You know, roof, and it can be very basic. You don't really have to worry about being you know, too detailed. So. Uh, once you so once you have your basic sort of idea here for the scene, then you know uh, like this is just the background. Then I'll start, for example, adding in uh, other things that I want to have in the scene. So I know that this will be just far away in the background. We'll just see some ruins, basically, of an of an old you know city on fire. Then I'm gonna add some you know barricades up here where the the Germans are gonna be hiding. So right now I'm not really sure what they are. They might be like up here. You could see I, I drew a, a little brick wall, uh, but maybe they'll be debris. Maybe or some old car or tank or something Wh whatever it is they want it to be you know right now you don't you don't have to worry about those details just kind of draw this basic shape like I did up here uh, then I'm gonna draw a, another um, here barricade for example for wh where the Americans are and I kind of have an idea of like maybe there's gonna be a road there you know going in the middle going all the way down to this town and once you're you know you kind of know exactly what the look is that you're looking you're going for then you can actually start looking for photos that, that you can use so uh, this is actually a picture here from Lebanon, I believe. Um, uh, you know, just some photo I found on the internet, and I'm just gonna, you know, cut it out and and, and paste it into my f fi final, you know, matte painting. Uh, here's some other photos that you know I just thought maybe I'll use, maybe like this brick wall there, or or even even this whole house, uh, maybe an old gate, stuff like that. You know, here's some more rooms. Once you have enough of these photos c collected, uh, then you can start bringing them into Photoshop and sort of you know using them to. Uh, to create your actual uh, background. Uh, in, in this scene, actually, I end up using uh, this photo up here and this one uh, the most. You know, just two photos again I found on, on Google, and uh, and I'm just gonna start cutting this stuff out. So I'll open it in Photoshop. So you know, I bring this photo into Photoshop uh, and just basically put it over my my whole composition. So as you can see, it's a pretty small photo. Um, it doesn't have that that much detail. But that's okay because you know I'm gonna sort of I'm gonna extend it I'm gonna make it bigger so uh, I'll use this one basically for the cover here where the, where the Americans are so I'll just sort of take this picture up here maybe and uh, gonna hide here our Americans in the foreground and I just want this kind of a pattern you know of this these stones to go up here for example where this one cover is so the way that I'll do this is uh, so uh, here's my layers. Uh, here, as you can see it, and here's this rock wall that I, that I ha have up here, uh, and I'm just gonna make it, you know, as a kind of increase its size. So uh, here on Windows, you just press Control T, or you can go to Edit and then uh, Free Transform, and you get these little icons up here, and you can just stretch your picture, make it as big as you want. So I'll make it maybe this big. And scale it up and just click enter to accept this and then above this layer I'm gonna cl click down here to create a new layer just a new empty layer I'll choose my cloning tool which is here clone stem tool and in the settings up here I'll just say uh, uh, current layer or I can say all layers so I'll choose all layers so basically I'm, I'm painting on the new layer but it's gonna be copying you know things from all the other layers um, and then you can just start basically copying the image, just sort of cloning it. So, uh, if, for example, I want to paint over this grass down here. So, go up here, press Alt, 
and you can just turns into this little icon and I'm just gonna say okay I want to copy you know this section of the image and now when you go down here you see it's actually copying it you know, whatever it says you know whatever the other part of the image is and you can just drag over it and right there it just kind of makes your wall a lot a lot bigger again I'll just press alt to choose another image so it's kind of more varied and I'm just gonna keep on going like this till uh, I paint this whole you know I get my whole wall painted in uh, and you know ever so on just go press alt again and choose a different image to a different part of the image to uh, to copy and you sort of go like this go like that just more or less paint it in how you how you think it should be and then once you have this done then uh, you can hide all the other layers actually just to make it easier you have these two layers selected you can go up here in your layers tab go uh, merge visible or control shift control E and basically combines those two layers the new one that you have and the original photo together and then now in this uh, here layer you can start deleting all the other stuff you don't want so I'll just go to uh, the eraser tool and you just sort of erase it you know er erase this the, the background so first we'll, we'll go up here to our brush make it a lot harder and the size just increase it and you know the top of the photo we don't care about at all I'll just do a quick and dirty job here. And once that's done, then we'll just decrease our brush size here. Uh, something more detailed. And again, you can just go across these edges up here. So it looks like, you know, the, ro the wall just ends there. And uh, once again, you can do this with a mouse. It's no problem. But if you do have a tablet, it just... I find it just makes it easier. Just working with the tablet, it's kind of more natural. And once you're done, you'll have something like this uh, up here. Um, yeah, I painted the cover all the way on this side and up here on this side. And if you now, if I make my Americans visible, you can see that uh, you know that matches. You know, it's the right size, that kind of stuff. Um, so now I can do the, the 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 cover basically for the the German soldiers. And for that one, I'm going to use uh, this photo. Here, I'm just going to bring it in, scale it up. Again, just photo of some bricks and um, and then uh, yeah just sort of place it you know more or less where I think I wanted to start and again just start cloning it and and, and erasing you know the, the stuff that I don't want to have in there once you're done with it you'll have something like this here's a German cover and uh, then on this side I want to have something completely different so I just brought in again a different image uh, I did the same thing, cloning it. Um, you can see I cloned it and kind of painted in this grass and stuff like that. And again, I, could, I used a few different photos for this. And then I, start, I can start adding in those sort of buildings that I wanted to have there in the background. So I bring in a photo like this. Uh, again, I just have to cut out the sky. Uh, you know, I have this other photo of just like some old French little village. Uh, I have a photo here from somewhere from Italy of this tower and a building. Um, and then here's this photo from Lebanon that I'm going to end up using and sort of repainting it and cutting it out. Uh, and then I brought in a photo up here of uh, of just uh, this kind of cobblestone street that is going to be it's going to be basically my, my starting point for for the the ground up here. So I have these ba basic images up here, and, uh, and then I start kind of refining it, start ex expanding the textures. So uh, again, I found some other photos that I could use, like uh, for example, this just pile of rubble from some con construction site. Uh, I took it and just duplicated it over and over. I mean, if you really look carefully, you'll see that a lot of the bricks are repeating up here and here. Uh, did the same thing for up here to make it look like this. There's another pile of debris in the distance. Uh, then I took this sort of texture that we had in this photo of, of the ground. And again, just use the clone tool, and I just kept on duplicating and copying it until I got something like this. And then uh, on top of that, I'm going to add uh, my, our, our street, the cobblestone, which is, you know, just again, the photo painted, and then, uh, you know, I, I added some other little bits of photos of like broken bricks on top of that. Um, then I end up adding the, some more stuff up here to kind of cover up this, uh, uh, the, the, this, this French town. Uh, so I have another photo that I'm going to put, which is just, again, 
old World War II photo of this destroyed uh, city. Put it somewhere there. Maybe scale it down overall to make it uh, make it look, you know, like it fits a bit more with the, with those the other buildings. Um, then what else do I do? I add maybe some other rubble here to again hide a little bit of this building and just to add like different levels, right? And again, make sure you keep all these on separate layers because then when you put it into After Effects, you'll be able to easily, uh, you know, make it into a, like a 3D looking scene. And here I add some more, you know, rubble here where one of the Germans is going to be hiding. Here's the rest of the, the, the cover for the Germans and then here's the American cover. And already you start getting a scene that's, you know, starting to look pretty, pretty nice. Uh, you know, it's still a lot of the colors don't match and all that stuff, but you don't have to worry about it at this point. What I'm gonna, you know, what I do, I'm still missing is a, is a sky, so I just found a f photo of this sort of really cloudy looking sky. And I'm just gonna take this photo, uh, copy it, and just paste it in up here to our, our scene, and just scale it up. Like that. And right there, just click enter. You see that it's, you know, kind of brings the whole scene together. Again, the colors and the brightness of those different images don't match, but we'll adjust all of that in the final comp in, in After Effects. Uh, so once you start up After Effects, you just gotta load in the, that image. So just double click up here, look for our image. And up here, just uh, when I ask you, you know, import kind, you can, you can import it as footage, composition, uh, just click composition. And then uh, you'll see that it basically creates a folder with all your, you know, actual images that you're using. And then here's a comp, and you can click on this comp. Uh, so you can see up here that it created all these layers for us. Uh, there's our Americans, German soldiers, and then uh, and, and then all the other, you know, uh, Im images that we created, all the other layers that we created in, f in Photoshop. Uh, so the next thing you can do up here is just click composition, composition settings, and just you know make make the scene actually as big as you want it to be in, in your final video. So I'm working with uh, 1280 uh, by 720, which is 720p resolution. So just put in the right pixel size, um, and uh, you know your frame rate, your length of your comp. Um, once you have that, you can start uh, making this into a, a 3D scene. So the way you do it is, you go here, layer, new, create camera. Uh, again, choose what kind of focal length. So you know it's as if you had a lens on your camera, 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter. I'm gonna choose 50 millimeter. Um, name your camera, whatever you want to name it. Click OK. And and you can basically now turn this into sort of a 3D scene uh, where you're going to use those you know, flat images and you're going to move around in space. Um, so the way you do that is you can go here to views, you can go to four views and here zoom out a bit. You can see our camera is here, this pink object. And uh, our images, we have to first make them uh, 3D layers. So. I'm just going to here select all of them and this this here stands for 3D so just enable for all of these and right there you see them that they turn into basically you know flat images that are lying in 3D space and you can move it forwards towards the camera so this is the right view, the right side is it here's our camera here's the middle of the scene and I just moved one of these layers here forward uh, same thing with this one here, this is the top view, so you can again grab that layer, move it forward, you can move it to the side, that kind of stuff. Um, and here, you gotta make sure that we're looking through the uh, our camera view. And yeah, and just, you know, start adjusting the size sort of and the, and the placement of all these uh, layers. So I'm gonna select all of them, I'm gonna scale them down because they're just too big for this scene right now. Okay. Um, and now I'm gonna grab, for example, the American cover, and you can see as I move forward, you can see it actually change perspective there. See, it gets bigger, and here in this view, and uh, yeah, it just seems like it comes closer to the camera. So I'll bring it really, really close here, and again, I'll adjust its size, maybe and position. I'll bring it up. Um, then I'll grab, for example, those. Here are those layers that are way, way there in the background. Um, 
Yeah, those buildings are moving far, far away. Uh, here you can see me moving it away. And just gotta, again, compensate because they're getting smaller. Just adjust it now. Adjust its scale. Then, same thing with this, for example, building here. Move it back, maybe halfway between the, you know, our center of the scene and where the, those buildings are. And you just sort of like lay out all these, you know, uh, the flat images in 3D space. And if you grab your uh, camera orbital, uh, here, this one, and we go back to our one view, we'll be able to see that, see, these are actually now in 3D space. Uh, let me make it bigger. The, all these layers are in 3D space. You can actually move around them. You can see how it looks. And so yeah, just keep on doing that and kind of adjusting it and you know where you think this should be. So obviously this will be closest to the camera. Here the where the Germans are will probably be second, then these debris will be behind them and uh, and stuff like that. Um and once you're done adjusting the the position you'll end up with uh, something like this. So here you can see the camera move away, you see all the different layers. So here's our cover for the Americans, the Germans, here's like a flat image that I put for the ground. Um, here's, you know, uh, the, the sort of mid-ground objects, uh, here's those little buildings far, far away in the background, and then here's the sky, a big sky image, and uh, again, to adjust the sky, uh, I had to sort of rotate it, put it at, at an angle, so it kind of looks like it's going over the city, and uh, again, that's easy to do, just once you look at the sky image, you go into uh, your transform, and you can adjust its uh, X rotation. So you can make it sort of tilted more or less, and um, yeah, that's how the scene will end up looking. So obviously from the side it doesn't look that good, but all we really care is that it sort of looks, you know, it lo looks still sort of like what it did in Photoshop when you look uh, look at it, you know, from head on. And the reason why we do that is because now we, ba we can basically move the camera, you know, if we, as long as we keep the camera pointed from the same position as it is right now, basically head on, and we just move it left, right, you know, so up and down, or, or we, m we can move in a little bit more into the scene, then the scene will look 3D. So next we'll, we'll work on our uh, camera move. So I grab my camera, go to point of interest and position, key it on the first fr frames. So here, just click the time watch uh, icon, and then uh, let, let's say at the beginning, I'll grab my pen tool, uh, the camera tracking tool, and I'll just move the camera to the right, like this, and I want to, this will be the starting position, and I want to end the camera, the, the scene, with the camera in this position, let's see here, because if I go too far, then there's no more images, so somewhere here, and you now I can just sort of move across, and you'll see that it's starting to look like it's 3D. Um, now the next thing you'll probably do is you'll end up adjusting all, all the brightness of the images. So, you know, just use your standard color correction tools here in After Effects. Um, you can also make it more 3D by adding a, a depth of field. So for example, here in the camera options, you can go depth of field, enable that, and right away you can see, for example, the object here. Objects really close to the camera and far away from the camera are, are out of focus, and everything here in the center is in focus. Here. And you can actually now adjust also where the camera focuses, so you can even animate it. So let's say at the beginning we want to be focused here on the foreground, um, or, or let's say focused here on, on the, the mid-ground. So we'll click the, the, the stopwatch, and then at this point, let's say we want the camera to focus here closer. Uh, so we move, adjust this value. Let's make it I don't know, 500, let's see how that looks, oh, too much. So 1500, somewhere there should do it, and uh, a bit less here, yeah, something like that, and you can see that uh, it looks as if, you know, your foreground goes out of focus and then in focus here. So again, it just makes it, makes it feel a little bit more like an actual 3D uh, scene. And uh, and then the last thing is you add in all your other you know your live action elements so all the the Americans here in the foreground, uh, 
Germans and then all your explosions that kind of stuff uh, you do at the end and then your color correction overall for the for the final scene and uh, this is kind of what you end up with I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial uh, once again my name is Tom Antos uh, you can check out my my channel uh, Tom Antos Films where I, I have all a bunch of other filmmaking tutorials anything from you know how to use your camera just basics you know uh, how to get achieve nice depth of field to camera angles framing that kind of stuff and and as always uh, subscribe and then rate and uh, and and favorite this video to since it helps me a lot uh, and, and helps the videos uh, you know come out on searches so that other people can see the videos and uh, and also find out uh, about my channel and if you want to see my actual work and for example like this finished video that I've used as an example in this tutorial then go to my main channel which is Polkan 99 uh, thank you see you next time